and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kelly of Lean Frontiers and I will serve as your host today. Just a few points of logistics before we get started. Today's short presentation is being recorded, so look for an email shortly after this recording with a link to view the session on demand. Please share it with those in your organization and perhaps even use the recording as part of a lunch and learn. Due to the short nature of this webinar, we will not be fielding questions. If you do have questions, our presenter will share their email address and you can email the presenter directly. Today's slow webinar is a lead up to the Lean Leadership Week, which takes place September 12th and 13th in Austin, Texas. Please consider joining us for this event as we have an incredible lineup of speakers you are not gonna want to miss. Lean Leadership Week is a week full of opportunity as we offer the Lean Accounting and Management Summit and the Lean HR and People Development Summit. You can learn more about the summit by visiting leanfrontiers.com forward slash L-A-M-S registration forward slash. So with that said, let me introduce our presenter today, Mike DeLuca. Mike is a faculty member and coach with the Lean Enterprise Institute. He is the former executive director of finance for Group Health Cooperative in Seattle, Washington, where he implemented lean accounting with his team to fully support and partner with the organization's lean transformation. So for now, I'll hand it over to Mike. Thanks very much, Kelly, and hello, everyone. I'm really uh, glad to have this opportunity to talk to you all. Um, just three goals that I have. I want to make sure I want I want to take the opportunity today to introduce and discuss uh, the 12 strategies for lean accounting. These are um, very helpful in thinking about how to inform our next steps as lean accounting practitioners. And so that's another goal is really to provide content to inform practitioners' next steps for all of you uh, out there listening and, and, and watching this webinar. Um, and also really wanna use this to set the groundwork for further deep dive webinars, because we will take the opportunity in future webinars to go into uh, groups of these strategies more in depth. Um, and, and in order to do that, I wanted to just do a quick goal and agenda review and introduce myself. Um, talk really briefly about what is lean accounting and accounting for lean may be familiar to many, if not all of you, but it's really good just to do that to set the groundwork. And then we'll go through the 12 strategies and then I'll talk about next steps for learning and application before we adjourn. Uh, so a little bit about myself, like Kelly mentioned, I'm faculty and coach for the Lean Enterprise Institute. I worked in a finance management and executive role at an organization where I was spent over 20 years here in the Seattle area, Group Health Cooperative. I was the executive director of finance as my last role there um, and, uh, and was responsible for financial planning and analysis for uh, a, a large portion of the organization's $4 billion annual revenue. Um, while, while I was there, we implemented both lean accounting and accounting for lean. We'll talk about what that means in just a minute. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that was in the early 2000s. So ran the organization in, in the finance team uh, as a, a, a lean function, a lean organization for over 10 years before leaving there in 2013. And since then I've been, like I said, coaching and, uh, and, and uh, working with folks on lean and lean accounting and finance. Uh, so again, just a little bit of background, the lean for accounting and accounting for lean. What are we talking about? The, ideas behind lean for accounting and accounting for lean are really not very much different than lean in operations that are customer facing but really the distinction that we want to make is the is between prov uh, in, bringing lean thinking into the accounting and finance team and thinking about how to improve our processes is critically important and foundational uh, and, and, and that's what you're seeing here. What are the lean tools that we can bring to streamline accounting and finance processes? Um, make sure that we're being really thoughtful about where are we, uh, are, are we experiencing process waste and what's really the value to the end customer of the services that we as a finance team provide. And so that's bringing lean thinking into, fin uh, into finance and accounting. And, and, and really that then leads to accounting for lean is how do we as a finance and accounting team provide more value to the organization uh, through our work so that the organization can improve value to the end customer. Since for the most part, accounting and finance doesn't directly uh, serve or deliver a product or service to the end customer. So that's really the, the whole universe of, uh, of lean accounting and accounting for lean. And that really sets us up for then what is the overall lean finance transformation? And that's the the premise behind this, again, just like the uh, bringing lean thinking into the organization overall is how do we continuously improve the value that we deliver? And for us, 
in finance and accounting, it's shifting as much as we can our focus from transactional work to an, an analytical and consultative work to really inform and accelerate uh, and enable the organization's lean transformation. So with that said, there are a number of strategies that we can think about to bring lean account lean thinking into accounting and finance and really from the lean accounting and accounting for lean perspective and we're going to spend a little bit of time on each one of these like i said in future webinars we'll take a smaller section of these and go more deeply into content both in terms of sharing some case studies uh, and then also some specifics about uh, how to how to approach that so we'll do that today at a higher level um, and we'll start with, with an, a really critical first one, which is understanding what lean activities are happening in operations. And so this will be true for many, but not all organizations, that your organization will be starting with lean thinking in direct customer-facing operations, and that uh, support services like finance and accounting and HR and IT may not be initially involved in that transformation and that adoption of lean thinking. And if that's the case, as it was in my organization, our challenge was to understand, well, what's going on in operations? How is lean thinking showing up in operations? And what does that, what does that mean for us as a finance team? So the first thing to do is really to go see. Um, and to go and to go see and understand what is happening in operations from a lean perspective. And one of the things we did early on was we created a, 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 a course for our finance team. We called it Finance in a Lean World, and we co-created it with our lean, our lean senseis, our, our, our lean coaches and really helped all of the team. I had 30 folks on my team understand uh, how, to, how, how to see process uh, and how to understand what's happening on at the process level that then informs our financial outcomes. Um, and so just a number of things that, that, uh, that are really helpful here to think about is how do we then, as a, as a finance team, really uh, really deeply understand operations lean activities and, and and a couple of ways that we did we we included accounting staff in all of our improvement projects all of the improvement events if you do if we had we had a week long kaizen that was preceded by a uh, you know an assessment phase and then the kaizen event and then the follow ons we would have a finance person involved in all of those kaizens um, along with what, whoever was functioning as the the lean consultant or the process improvement coach we also got into a regular habit it was part of our standard work to attend team huddles and operations and that was really impactful and then another thing that we did, which can be a very helpful approach to doing this, is to shadow processes. We would go on process walks uh, with folks in operations, observe processes, take notes, and, and use that to more deeply understand. So, so the first strategy is really to plunge into operations lean activities. And then, and then building on that, if we think about the daily improvement tools in, in lean thinking, what can we do in our own finance team to understand where there is process waste that, ha that, is, that, that is, uh, has crept into our daily work and our daily processes? And how can we use that for a, a, an approach to a to daily improvement that we can be making in finance um, and this isn't this isn't yet uh, large-scale improvements these are just the daily improvements of why do we do that in paper versus electronically just just there's what you would expect to be very uh, the, the typical types of improvements that can be made at the individual contributor or team level and you'll see Q52 on here, and that's a that's a reference to a tool that Jean Cunningham used with her team. It was basically, can we make an can everyone make an improvement every week of the year, so that we're building a series of improvements that is really regardless of magnitude, we're constantly looking at opportunities to drive waste out of our processes. We'll talk as we get further into the 12 strategies around where does customer value fit in here, but at this point, we're really talking about daily habits to understand our own work in finance and drive waste out of them. For my team, we used a continuous cycle that spanned uh, a, a number of weeks where we were continually looking at opportunities for uh, PDCA, for plan, do, check, adjust, 
what opportunities do we have to improve processes and reduce waste? Um, and and that was the that's obviously the plan phase. Then do something, try an experiment, try something differently, uh, and check to see if it made an improvement and adjust. So any number of ways to think about what daily improvement looks like in the finance team, but a couple of concrete examples to think about that. As we start to think about waste in larger scale processes, um, it's, it's potentially very impactful for some finance teams to look at the closing calendar and, and, and think about not just how to reduce the closing calendar, this says reducing the closing calendar, and, and I'll, I'll share a couple of examples, but we can talk about not necessarily just reducing the calendar. If you have a, a, a crisp close cycle, what you might be looking to do is to reduce the overburden and the unevenness in getting that work done. So I'll share two examples. One organization that I worked with that had a closing calendar where after the end of the calendar month, it took more than the entire subsequent calendar month to close the books. And this was highly impactful for the organization, not just because management reports weren't available in, in at all a timely fashion, but because the organization's revenue depended on their ability to close their expenses because they had an expense reporting based revenue contract. Um, and, and, and so they, they were very lagged in being able to report expenses to their external uh, grantors and funders in order to, in order to collect revenue. So they cut their calendar in less than half. So in some cases, it's really impactful to reduce the closing calendar itself. And another example uh, of an improvement that, that I was, uh, was able to be a part of, the, the closing calendar was, was four business days after the end of the calendar month. The issue with that team was that it was done with a significant amount of overburden and overtime. So folks were spending 16, 18 hour days in order to get that fourth day close completed. And so we have to think about what's, what's a better way to think about leveling that work. So we want to reduce the calendar or reduce process waste, unevenness, overburden in that. And then also in doing this, who's the end user of the outputs from the monthly close process? And are they really getting the value of that information in a, in a timely fashion that is relevant for them. So, so a lot of improvement to think about in terms of reducing the closing calendar. Um, and, uh, and that also then contributes to how do we optimize the financial data that we're providing? Uh, and this is a really impactful way to think about who is the customer of the financial data that your finance and accounting team provides, who, who uh, gets uh, monthly or recurring reports, whether it's from the close, directly from the close process or, or in an, uh, based on another cycle, and, and how, how are you leveraging the financial and administrative data to really provide uh, useful and insightful information to the end users. Um, this was one, one approach that we took. My team produced over 400 recurring monthly reports uh, and, and we were very intentional in working with the end users as we brought lean thinking into the organization around how to think about how each of those reports helps the organization improve customer value. And, and we had previously tried to whittle down the number of reports. We weren't convinced prior to bringing lean thinking in that they were all helpful, but end users typically would say that they wanted to continue to re re receive the report. I think one of the significant transformations that happened in our team was when we were able to have a joint conversation around how that report, how our ability to analyze and then produce uh, a report and then incorporated financial and administrative data really helped the end user improve customer value. And, and in doing so, we whittled the number of monthly reports down from 400 to just over 100 uh, that were not just uh, agreed upon in terms of helping the end user improve customer value, but we made improvements in the reports themselves as a result. So, so it's really, uh, so it was a significant shift for not just us in the finance and accounting team, but for the end users of the reports as well, because it really aligned with the deepening of their lean thinking. And along with that, as we're doing reports, as we're, as we're producing information 
and you know, whether it's through reports or other communications to end users in our organizations, to, to, to what degree are we using terminology that is truly clear, truly clear to the end user? And you can see some examples on here, uh, in, just in terms of we, what we call things and how clear is that to the end user? So if you were to get to do some voice of the customer uh, analysis or research around the end users of your reports and just check understanding how well are these indic how clear are these indicators to you? Do you understand what what these what these indicators, these KPIs, the terminology in these reports mean? And and can we can 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 we translate that as much as possible to terms that are familiar and comfortable for the end user? Um, so so, so that's an, another really critical element is converting to English that is in common use for folks who would typically be the users of the reports. Now, I was in healthcare and, and, and certainly a lot of uh, clinical leaders in hospitals and, and, and clinical centers would not be familiar with the terminology that we would typically use. And so even just thinking about how are things labeled in your chart of accounts can be really impactful in terms of getting the best understanding and then use of the reports and, and information that you produce. And we've talked about daily improvement in finance and accounting and looking at waste on a, uh, on a, in a, in a small scope daily process basis. But what about some significant improvements in terms of accounting and finance processes? We've talked about month end close as one example, but there are certainly other examples that can be really impactful and and one example that I that I'd pull out of this one particular strategy is the um, bill to collect family of processes, or we can sometimes call it order to cash uh, family of processes, where going from the point at which a customer commits to consuming a product or service to all the way to the time that the the payment is recognized in the financials, and that's and that transaction is balanced and closed. There, there can be a significant amount of waste in that process. And in many cases, that can actually have a, a negative impact on the customer's experience of, of, of their transaction with the organization. So I'll give uh, just one quick healthcare example. I was working with a healthcare provider that had annual revenue uh, for one particular service of about 40 million. And their, their uh, days of sales outstanding uh, were about 70, which is uh, significant and and as you think more about how healthcare is reimbursed, some of that is just based on how how lagged we are in, in terms of, of providing services and getting paid. But but 70 days of sales outstanding at $100,000 a day, um, if you can improve that by 10 days, that's a million dollars worth of improvement on the balance sheet. So you can free up working capital. There's a lot of working capital encumbered in these days sales outstanding. So there can be significant breakthrough improvements in many of our, if not all of our, all of our accounting and finance functions and processes. Um, also thinking about what measures do we produce for the organization to deeply understand performance. We, one of our big transitions in my organization was thinking about the shift from largely dollar-based measures to really uh, proportionately more non-dollar-based measures as we began to understand how frontline processes impacted financial outcomes and then worked with operations to, to identify the most relevant measures of those frontline processes and then how they connected to outcomes. And thinking about the key categories of, of customer value uh, and, and, and key categories that are, that are critical to the organization like quality, delivery and cost, um, and then also safety and morale. What are the process measures, the frontline measures that we're working with operations to track and publish. And some of these could be daily or shift by shift. Some of them are weekly, some of them are still monthly, but we move to more real-time lean measures of, of performance that, that we as a finance team understand uh, in terms of how they relate to the financial outcomes. And again, as we get into more deep dive webinars on some of these topics, we can go over some specific examples and how to structure those. Uh, another major area of opportunity, both in both is in terms of not just 
considering uh, process waste from the financial perspective, but also really the clarity and understanding of financial performance from the end user's perspective is, uh, is cost, standard cost accounting and, and really any type of any type of allocation methodology, the more, the more we allocate, the more we model financially, the more we might obscure uh, the understanding of financial performance for the end user. And, and so with lean thinking and accounting, we really step back and try and understand what's the problem that the end user is trying to solve or what question are they or are they looking to answer are they trying to deeply understand profitability either for a value stream or a particular product or a particular service um, or across a series of sites or regions are they trying to understand uh, how they would incrementally price a new product or service or how they would price a new business are they looking to um, to do a business case analysis for a new product or for their business structure and so how can we think about the right type of, of financial allocations if any that would really help inform that and in many cases what we what we'll, what we do is we will peel back and and remove allocations and 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 cost accounting methods in order to in order to show the way that the financials behave differently whether we're talking about uh, incremental direct changes in revenue and expense or overhead allocations or other financial impacts and so pulling those apart uh, can be much more helpful than some of the allocation and cost accounting methodologies that we currently have. But again, it's not being critical of the methodology as much as it's stepping back and saying, what are we trying to solve or answer by doing the cost accounting or the allocation? And can we have the financial process most easily and crisply meet that, meet that end user need? Another really highly impactful way to think about what we can do in accounting and finance is by working in, in particular on the purchasing side of the house and thinking about how is it from a financial accounting perspective, we can bring light to the financial impacts of, of, of items that we're purchasing, in particular raw materials that come into the organization. And the opportunities for improvements in financial position through working more uh, more thoughtfully with vendors and what opportunities are there for that. So I'll give a couple of really quick examples. One is depicted here on the screen. Uh, the first one I'll share is not on the screen, uh, uh, but it's a manufacturing organization that I had the opportunity to, to, to do a number of site visits with that had moved to um, to vendor managed inventory in order to in order to address a number of issues that they had one of those issues was the lack of floor space to store input or raw materials and the need to expand their facilities and they challenged their thinking on the need to expand their facilities by saying well how is it that we use our floor space on a significant amount of it was dedicated to raw materials and so they went to a much smaller raw materials uh, raw material footprint in order to do so they had to be sure that they weren't going to be in at risk of of stocking out of parts that they needed to produce the products that they were delivering and so they partnered with vendors to do a number of things uh, one of them was to uh, have the have the uh, vendor stock parts on site and have an electronic signal anytime a part was pulled for use in in production of uh, an electronic signal went to the vendor and the vendor benefited in in a, in a couple of ways one was by having the uh, a real-time signal of when of when this particular manufacturer needed more needed more parts so they were able to better forecast their own production they also got an instantaneous payment uh, so they had really zero days in receivables because as soon as that part was used, uh, they were they were able to be paid for it. Now obviously they had stocked it prior to that, but as soon as it's used, it's it's paid for, and and so there was a significant benefit for both the manufacturer and the supplier, and the manufacturer was able to negotiate price uh, unit price uh, uh, reductions as a result. So a number of benefits there. And the example you see on your screen, this isn't a process map, this is a spaghetti diagram of the number of different places that supplies would be stored on their way from the receiving dock to the point of care 
in a heart and vascular center. And so you can see um, in the diagram up to 16 places where materials could sit and be stored, uh, organized and stored before being picked again to move to get to the point of, of use in healthcare. And, and this was expensive in, in many, 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 many ways. And, and, and this organization addressed this uh, and freed up a significant amount of working capital and also really alleviated. They were actually in the process of moving from an older facility into a newly designed facility. They were able to design less storage space into the new facility and reduce their overall cost to build the new facility by looking at their whole supply process. And the accounting team was really critical in helping them see the the process the waste and the opportunities in order to in order in order to do the analysis but another area if we start to think in terms longer term thinking is a focus on strategic planning and and having finance continue to play a, a deeper and deeper role in looking forward with the organization uh, oftentimes we are in, in an important role of reporting what has happened in a very clear and crisp way. Uh, and as we deepen our lean thinking in the organization, we also really uh, deepen our focus on current and forward-looking indicators. And the finance team can be a really key partner in looking forward uh, with the organization on strategic planning. Not just from that perspective though, but as we think about then how the strategic plan is deployed, finance and accounting plays a really important role in the linked checking of frontline measures, again, up to not just the financial outcomes, but to all of the organization's strategic outcomes. And so our expertise in measurement and understanding the relationship between indicators and outcomes is, is very impactful and, and helpful in enabling and supporting the organization and deploying and checking the strategy and progress on the strategy. So th that's a really significant uh, opportunity for us in accounting and finance as well. Uh, one, other, one other really potentially significant opportunity, and we're talking, I was talking just a minute ago about the idea that we focus as much on current and leading indicators as we bring lean thinking into accounting and finance as we do on reporting what's happened in the past is this idea that there is, there is some waste associated with a fixed budgeting process that if we step back and say the budget, like any process, serves an end user in a series of, of uses that they need to make of it. So if we think about who's the end user of the budget and how would it best serve them, and we step back and say, all right, let's not call it a budget for one, let's call it a financial plan, and think about how planning supports the organization in making decisions and making adjustments based on current and, and forecasted information, uh, what, what we may find is not that we simply eliminate the budget, but that we actually shift to something for the organization that is most helpful in terms of planning and control. Uh, and so that can be eliminating the budget, it can, it, it can be reframing it. Uh, what we moved to in my organization was a six quarter rolling future forecast with scenarios that we could then adjust um, and that really helped the organization sense and respond uh, to current conditions in the market, both internal, uh, internal changes in performance and external. Um, and so that helped us be a lot more dynamic in our planning and also in actually in deploying the strategy. Um, because as the organization checked its strategy on a regular basis, if we needed to shift the financial plan, we could do that again dynamically uh, and adaptively along with changes in performance. So it's not just that the budget is bad, which this diagram may imply, it's to say that any financial plan that isn't as effectively focused on the end user's needs has opportunity for improvement. And so that's how we really uh, have thought about that. And then finally, another really impactful and perhaps the most impactful on the culmination of all of these is shifting again from our what can be in accounting and finance our more inwardly focused transactional work as we strive to ensure that the statements we produce are uh, are accurate and and meet uh, all of our audit requirements and our other financial reporting requirements which continues to be critical as we bring lean thinking into the organization but how we really 
enhance the focus of our teams and our team's great talents and skills and capabilities to more to more effectively consult with the organization around what these indicators mean and and how the organization can use that to make decisions uh, in, that improve customer value. So one of the things that my, that uh, that our my team did in in uh, in in finance and the organization that I worked for was to really really work back from how the organization is working to improve customer value. And, and then how finance connects to that. So we want our customers, and this is again a healthcare example, but perhaps not really different from any of your examples, we want the end customer to more deeply engage. Uh, and that is, if we improve value to the end customer, that will lead to increased business. That either means that existing customers will continue to come back. Um, they may, in the healthcare example, they. They may, uh, in, 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 you know, increase their coverage if they're if they're purchasing health insurance, um, and we can because we've got satisfied customers, then attract more customers and then improve market share. So any number of ways that engaging customers by improving value leads to increased business. That there will be ex many examples of that that are specific to your industry. Our customer facing operations are working to imp improve products and processes that are directly customer facing. And as we think about what finance does, we were all the way on the far left. We were producing reports, tools, analyses, and performance. And what we weren't necessarily doing as effectively was connecting the dots between what it was we produced and how operations understood and then used those and leveraged that to improve customer value. So this connecting piece of becoming a consultative business partner and creating clarity and understanding around the indicators and the and the drivers of financial performance became a really critical uh, role and a connector for us in 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 my organization. So so that's a a, a cursory and but hopefully helpful and insightful review of the 12 strategies for bringing lean thinking into the accounting and finance function and i would ask you to think as you're wrapping up your listening to this today what can you do right away based on this the value for me in going to a conference or attending a workshop or listening to an online webinar is what could i try right away uh, that would help me move forward so you might think as you reflect on this which of these strategies would work most for your for you and your organization which would be most impactful and you can think about that in a number of ways one of them is where is there a great opportunity where the, the the financial performance of the company by might be might be greatly improved or materially improved another way to think about it though is just like with any team our accounting and finance team may feel already um, at capacity or overburdened and so what could we do with these strategies to address uh, some of that capacity and overburden and create some capacity in order to now focus on some other value added activities that that uh, more more deeply support the organization and and that was what my team did in, in as far as reducing the number of re of recurring reports for example that we produced that was a way that we created a great deal of capacity to then delve into what what else could we be doing for our customer facing operations that would really be uh, more impactful and so so that's one a couple of ways to think about it is where are there significant opportunities for financial improvement and where are there opportunities to create capacity on the accounting and finance team because lean accounting doesn't imply that we want to make the work more efficient so that we can reduce the headcount in accounting what it means is that we want to create capacity to really much more effectively deploy and leverage the great skills and capabilities that we have on the finance team. So think about which of the strategies might work for you and your organization, and then what would you do next and how you get started? Uh, try and, and be uh, tactical. Uh, and here are some examples. Uh, there are plenty of books and articles and blogs out there, and, and you can contact me and also the folks at Lean Frontiers, for example. There are great resources on the Lean Frontiers uh, webpage, also uh, uh, um, resources on at the through the Lean Enterprise Institute, and we're just beginning to uh, create a center for lean accounting and learning and practice at the Lean Enterprise Institute and, and continuing to deeply uh, 
a partner with the with uh, the great team at Lean Frontier. So lots of great resources through both organizations. Also, uh, encourage you to visit other firms that have implemented lean accounting. Go see what they're doing. Um, spend time with your operations counterparts and understand what their needs are as an internal customer or an, or an end user of the, of the services and information and materials that you provide. There are great conferences, summits, workshops, uh, and of course, uh, one that I never miss one, from one year to the next is the Lean Accounting Summit. That's coming up in September in Austin. There'll be more webinars in this series, and I encourage you to practice and experiment and then check adjust. Also wanted to share a little bit about uh, one of the folks that I've had the, the great pleasure and honor of learning from over my career in lean accounting, and, and that's Gene Cunningham, currently the uh, executive chair of the Lean Enterprise Institute and uh, also author of a, a number of really helpful books. Um, and, and I just wanted to highlight a few of these real numbers. Uh, the book on the left, left was the one that really got us started in my team uh, at Group Health and was really the the source of the material for our transformation. So a lot of great information in these books as well. Uh, and then always please feel free to reach out to me. My email is here at the end and I really appreciate your time uh, and your attention today and hope that you are able to do something coming out of here that uh, deepens your lean accounting uh, practice and the, uh, and the collaboration that you have with others in your organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for your thought leadership and for taking the time to share your thoughts with us today. That was awesome. Uh, as mentioned earlier, you will receive an email shortly with the link to the recording. Please share this with those who might find th this information useful. And just a final reminder to visit leanfrontiers.com forward slash L-A-M-S registration forward slash to learn more about Lean Leadership Week, which takes place September 12th through 13th in Austin, Texas. Thanks again, Mike, and thanks to everyone who participated in today's webinar. Have a great day.